To declare a pointer in C++, you would use an asterisk symbol next to your pointer name. To illustrate this, when declaring a regular int scalar variable, you might enter the following, int a. When declaring a pointer b, you'll proceed by entering int asterisk b. As you can see, the pointer variable contains the asterisk symbol. Let's look at the memory to see what just happened. For the scalar variable int a, four bytes of memory were reserved. If you look at the representation, you'll see that int a was in fact assigned four bytes of memory and is located at memory address 0x34, so just a random memory address. If we were to assign a value to the scalar variable a, the reserved space will be modified to include the value directly. The rest of the bytes are padded with zeros. Why? Down the line, you may want to modify the integer value. It has to make sure that it supports the predefined integer range, which happens to be this massive number to that massive number for signed bits and zero to that even larger number for unsigned bits. For the pointer variable, depending on the architecture, on a 32-bit machine, four bytes of memory will be assigned for a pointer variable. On a 64-bit machine, eight bytes will be assigned. For simplicity, we'll use an abstract representation where a pointer only takes up one byte. So when pointer B was declared, it'll be associated with a memory address just like the scalar variable, but we'll not be able to store values directly like the scalar variable A. It can only store memory addresses. Here you can see that a memory address 0x11 is where pointer B is located. A lot of the times a zero is assigned upon declaration so we'll go ahead and enter the memory address 0 into the 0x11 memory address. The pointer B currently doesn't point to anything, so let's change that and point the B pointer to the A scalar variable, which is located at 0x34. We can't simply enter B equals A, since A provides the value stored in 0x34, and B stores only the memory address. To store the address of A into pointer B, we have to use the ampersand symbol in front of A. So B equals ampersand A. Now the memory address of A is stored in pointer B. B now points to A's memory address. If we were to print out the pointer B, we would get the hexadecimal value 0x34, which is the address that's stored in pointer B. To print out the value of A, we have to first dereference the pointer B by including the asterisk symbol in front of it again. To explain dereferencing a bit further, we'll look at a couple of examples. Currently, B is a declared pointer int asterisk b and it points to a's memory address. To print out the value of a, we'll use c's printf statement. As you can see, b is the dereference pointer and will produce the value stored in a, which is 5. How do we update the value stored in a? We can accomplish that two different ways. The first way is by assigning the new value to a directly, so a equals 10. The other way is by dereferencing the pointer on the left-hand side of the expression. So when you see the expression asterisk b equals 10, asterisk b is the same as a since b points to a. If we were to create other variables, we can keep pointing our pointer to different things by assigning the new memory address to our pointer. For example, let's say we create a new int c scalar variable. To assign pointer b to scalar c, we would do the same process as before, b equals ampersand c. Notice that we did not dereference the pointer b. Since we didn't dereference the pointer b, b was modified directly and now points to the memory address of c. So now, what is a reference in C++? You can think of it as an alias, for example, another name for the same existing memory address. In this example, we've already declared two scalar variables, a and c. To have an alternate name for each, we can use a reference. To add a reference to a, we can do the following, int ampersand ref equals a. In this case, the ampersand symbol appearing on the left-hand side indicates that the variable ref should be a reference and will essentially be the same thing as a. We know that a is located at 0x34. The new reference ref will also be located at memory address 0x34. If we were to print either a or ref, we would see the value 10. 
we assigned a equals 10 earlier. Since a reference now exists to point our pointer b back to a, we can achieve that in two different ways. First one being b equals ampersand a or b equals ampersand ref. The reference type in C++ is different than the reference type in Java. In Java, we have two different types, value type and reference type. The value types are composed of your primitive data types, which in Java are byte, short, int, long, float, double, boolean, and char. All other variable types are reference types. String is a reference type, but remember that strings in Java are immutable, so a new object will be created in the heap when attempting to modify a string. References in Java behave more like C or C++ pointers and not like the C++ reference type. The biggest difference is that Java references always point to objects where C and C++ pointers can point to anything. To create a value type in Java of type int, you can do the following, such as int var name is equal to 10. This statement associates a memory location with var name and assigns it the value of 10. The same process when we did int a is equal to five in the C++ example. When we create a reference type of type car, my own class that I created, as in the following example, Dino's car is assigned a memory location and the car object is assigned a spot in the heap. The location or memory address of the car object in the heap is stored in the reference variable Dino's car. The new operator creates the car object in the heap, gets the memory address of the car object in the heap and assigns it to Dino's cars. Why do we need references? Memory management. Let's look at another example. So in this example, A has a primitive data type int. It's assigned a value of 10 and stores that value directly in its assigned memory address. We print out a, and as expected, it prints out 10. Next, we call a method that takes an integer and as an argument and increments it. Once we print out a again, we expect the printout to be 11, but in this case, it's 10. Why? When providing the argument a to increment, the increment method makes a copy of it and the scope is restricted to the increment method. The local variable a inside the increment method is a stack dynamic variable and its lifetime is roughly the length of the method. Upon method completion, the local variable a inside the increment method is discarded and is no longer visible. When a reference variable is passed as an argument, the memory address of the object in heap is passed and the modifications are done directly on the object itself. So for example, in this case, the change car method has two parameters, car A and string new car. Reference variable A only contains the memory address of the object car that's located somewhere in the heap. That heap object is modified directly. The object is not copied into the change car method. Why? Objects can be massive. We don't want to copy such large objects each time a method is called because we may run out of memory quickly and our programs would be significantly slower. And that's pretty much all I got for you guys on this topic. I will see you guys next time.